What is up, my fellow Net Dwellers? Couch Command here. We're doing another Five Amazing Mods. This time we're looking at one of the great RPGs of the last couple of years. That is Pillars of Eternity 2, Attain via Steam. You sneak and backstab that like button, comment on which mod you like best, and subscribe for more weekly modding content. Now let's jump into it. This mod is known as the quality of life, the new options for healers. It basically takes your normal healer abilities and it adds additional attributes onto them to make them slightly better at healing. Uh, it affects a variety of classes such as druids, rangers, paladins, priests, scions, chanters, and implements a few spells for all of them. I've got a couple of the different classes up here we can take a look at. For instance, this is a scion. So they've added some stuff as far as additional perks to your spells here. So Solomon's been modified to have plus two health restored per one second for every eight seconds. If you go over to Essence Bounce, Essence Bounce now has the additional ability of adding plus one bounce for 14 health. So it jumps from targets and will heal 14 health per target. And it has an increase of plus 0.25 bounces per level. So my current one will be allied and jumps targets by one. But as you go up about level four, you'll be able to heal two targets with it and so on and so forth as you increase your level. Spiritual Wave now has an additional bonus of dealing 16 to 20 raw damage with an additional 18 health restore for AOE. Essence Shield now has an additional 10 seconds all damage shielding, 50 points of absorption for fast healing damage. So, lasts a little longer, blocks all damage types. Pretty useful on that one. Echoing Ego is now bouncing 4 health for 3 seconds, healing over time. And adds in bouncing and stacking for your player level, so your healthy and stacking and duration will all stack on that one. Echoing Ego now will have the additional... Bounce of four health for three seconds is the basics. But it will also scale over time for increasing your number of targets and the stack duration for bounce. So as you get higher, this will become way more effective in healing. Essence growth will heal 20% of a character's health per 30 seconds. And that's just a few of the ones that you have available for Scion. Let's go into one of the other classes. So for Priest modifications, you have Protect the Innocent, which now grants immunity to everything for five seconds. There we go, Pair of the Body, which adds an additional five health restored for three seconds for 60, along with the original Fit bonus. Now has an added power level bonus for whenever you cast it versus just the increase to Smart. So it Gives you plus one to all power levels for 60 seconds. Litany for body now has the ability to also have health restored, 10 health for three seconds for 60 seconds. So it's not just the hardy attribute gets applied, but they'll also have healing done with it. Now it has a power level boost as well of plus two to all power levels for 60 seconds along with the Q. For druids, they only really modified the life giver tree and life giver at level one has the ability to do rejuvenating touch which restores 10 health for every 12 seconds last 24 seconds and then for rangers they added in the ability to have healing poultice at level one which applies healing to your allies so it'll give plus 30 health restored whenever you apply it As I said, this isn't all the this isn't all the classes that are available. They also added some healing for paladins and for chanters, but this gives you the majority of the field. The mass, the vast majority of the stuff that was added was specifically for priests and for uh, ciphers, specifically cipher scions. But that is the quality of life and new options for healers. This next mod is the upgrade everything mod. By default, normally you can only upgrade your golds as far as the game goes. So if you come into your character here, you go into your upgrades, it's just items like this that would be upgradable. 
However, with the upgrade everything, you can now upgrade your blue level weapons. You can now upgrade your normal items. It literally just lets you upgrade everything. So if you want to make a hat, fine, you can. If you want to upgrade your armor, like your breastplate, you can upgrade that all the way up to legendary if you wanted to. It's pricey, but you can do it. You can even upgrade it up to exceptional. And it'll apply the plus effects to all of them. So this one just lets you literally upgrade all of your items. So you can now enchant anything instead of just being able to increase the overall effectiveness of your gold items. As many of you know, Pillars of Eternity started out as an homage to the old Baldur's Gate games, which was based on the old D&D class 2 and 2E, I believe, if I'm remembering right. And they were created because there hadn't been a new Baldur's Gate game since like the early 90s. I mean, it's been a long time. Neverwinter Night was in there for a little bit and kind of stepped in, but it didn't really meet the same niche that Baldur's Gate did as far as the party-based combat. Anyway, after all that long rant, the downside was Pillars of Eternity is not a D&D game, which means they can't use all the same spells as D&D. However, thanks to modders, we can bring back some of those D&D spells into the game, which is exactly what the extended spell collection does. So if we take a look here at the wizard, so you've got arcane light as the first level spell, which gives you small glowing balls of light that provide illumination. You've got mechanical mastery, which lets your wizard unlock doors, right? I'm sure people are catching on by now. You've got good old limited invisibility, which makes you invisible, well, relatively invisible. You've got Elemental Sword. You've got True Invisibility, if we go all the way down to level 8. Oh, and I completely skipped level 7. You've got Disintegrate, which, I mean, it's Disintegrate for God's sake. How could you not, right? Anyways, level 9, you've got True Invisibility. You've got good old-fashioned Arc Lightning. And you have Temporal Acceleration. Wait. Yeah, wrong level. Level 9, you have Temporal Acceleration, which is basically haste. You've also got Temporal Cessation, which is slow. Obsidian Sword of Destruction. And Veil of the Wall. Which basically makes your entire party invisible for duration of the spell. The priests also have additional spells now. They have Blessed Harvest, which is only for Blondes, which give you increased damage to people who are injured. We've got Barot's Awe. Invisibility Ward, which just makes it so people can't be invisible around you. Sorry. Superior Restore. Limited Spell Resistance, which just makes your character immune to spells for a little bit. At level 8, we've got Divine Power. And at level 9, you have Superior Spell Resistance. And Miraculous Recovery. For the Druid, at level 1, we've got Andra's Whip. At level 5, we have Ocean Burst, which is basically Water Ball. Someone's Water Ball, Liquid that Explodes. We also have Limited Savage Powers, which makes your... It's basically a bump to your Druid. We've got Watery Double at level 6. Which just creates a duplicate of your Druid that can cast lower level spells. We've got Storm Burst which is unleashes a shockwave. Invisibility ward again. So they took an account by adding invisibility. They need to be able to do stuff to be able to detect invisibility, which is why they added invisibility ward to so many classes. Level seven, we've got erupting flame, which is a fire pillar, more or less. Causes flame and magma just to shoot up from beneath earth. Peak condition, which enhances the rejuvenation of any character. Lunar radiance, which basically focuses lunar light to... Creative, which basically focuses Lunar Light to create a hill area. At level 8, we have Storm's Call, where he can, or they can use, a, it's basically Lightning Spell, right? It's where they can, well, Lightning Bolt, it's where they can point down to an area and call in Lightning repeatedly on given targets. And at level 9, you have Superior Savage Powers, Chitinous Caprice, which basically is just bumps your defense and all that. And Touch of Death, which is just basically a kill spell. If they fail their save, they just die. But that's it as far as the extended spells mod goes. But it does add quite a bit to at least three of the major classes in the game. This mod is called the Armor Can Block 100%. The normal modifier for armor is once you reach a certain threshold, no matter how much higher the armor class is than the weapon you're striking for for penetration, 
you'll only do 25% damage. This one allows for armor classes that exceed significantly the penetration of weapon to fully block the damage from the weapon. For instance, if we look at my uh, character here, as far as the inventory goes, I've got an armor ranking of 10. If I have an armor ranking of 10, and my penetration's 10, I'm going to do 100% damage. However, if my penetration is 9, armor radium 10, I then go and do 75% damage. At minus 2, so armor rating 10, penetration 8, 50% damage. Armor rating 10, penetration 7, 25% damage. Armor rating 10, penetration 6, 10% damage. Armor rating 10, penetration 5, I take no damage. Anything below that doesn't matter. It's all 0% at that point. Now, this mod affects both your character as well as the characters you're fighting against. So it's entirely possible if you go against something with a high enough armor class, you're not going to be able to hurt it. I've got a young Drake here that we're probably going to deal with fairly easily, but I'm not sure 100% what it is. Do you know what's the damage to me? Take this. Better run. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can pull out. Need a hand? This is too much. Whereas this champion has decent armor, these guys are doing next to nothing. However, I think I have enough where this skirmisher is not going to be able to hurt me. This. Provided he doesn't do poison, which he just did, but. Uh, that's how it's done. Yeah. So, the armor mod is just something to think of whenever you're using combat. Make sure you've got as much armor on your tanks as possible, in which case you can actually manage to make them take 0% damage. On the flip side, you want to make sure you have decent penetration on all your characters. That way you actually can hurt the enemies versus just having you sit there and do nothing. Which, early on, I was trying to attack some level 2 enemies where there were two levels above what I was, and I just couldn't damage. It was swinging non-stop. I had to use so many spells to actually be able to bring them down finally. But yeah. So for anybody who wants the ability to pass any skill check they could possibly get in the game, wants to be able to be a master of mechanics, lock picking, stealth, you name it, the skill pet mod is for you. The normal pets add plus one effect to all the party, which is nice. However, skill pet takes it a step beyond that. Skill pet gives you three pets to pick from, snow, kitty, and apple. And what they do instead is grant your party plus 20 to every single item. So let me remove the skill pet real quick and let's go over and look at my character. These are my normal skills here where I'm minus alchemy plus an athletics, all that stuff. Barbarian, he's kind of dumb. But if we come in, oop, if we come into our inventory and we go ahead and equip Cosmo here. But not Cosmo. If we come into our inventory and we equip Snow here, go back to that screen, 
All of a sudden, I'm a master of alchemy, arcane, bluff, diplomacy, you name it, my character can do it. The one disadvantage to that is that it only affects your own character. If you come over to your other ones, you'll notice that they do not have the additional bonus. So basically, your primary character is going to be doing everything. That is the skill pet mod. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any suggestions on other games or mods that you'd like to see on the channel, please message me on Twitter at CouchCommand, that's CouchCMD, or in the Discord. Link's up at the top of my channel page. Don't forget to have your animal companion maul that like button, leave a message down in the comments on your favorite mod, and subscribe for more weekly modding content. This was CouchCommand. You all have a good night, a great tomorrow, an amazing rest of the week. I'll see you next time.